Hello there, World of Tankers. I'm Drudels Blitz, and today I'm going to be telling you about my favorite Tier 10 Heavy in the game. And as you can see from the gameplay in front of you, it is the WZ-111 5A. And while the statistics on this tank may not be spectacular, it's very quick, got a very big heavy hitting gun, and there's a bunch of other reasons I'm going to be telling you just why I really love playing this tank. Now, of course, many of you guys have different opinions than me, so let me know what your favorite tanks are in the comments down below. The first reason I love the 111 5A is because it carries a big gun. In fact, it carries a 130mm cannon capable of dealing 460 average damage. And the reason I really like that is because if the issue for me in a 113 is when you're pulling out, you have to constantly be shooting at the enemy to really maximize your damage per minute. And when you're fighting a tank, let's say like an IS-7, when you're in the 113, sure, you'll tap them for 420, but they'll tap you back for 460, and they're going to wait that 10 seconds for the reload to come back, and then they're going to pull out and tap you again. So what's happening there is you're actually losing hit points and you're losing damage per minute because they're just waiting until it reloaded to pull out. And when you're in a tank like the 111 5A, you can wait for that reload and you're going to be tapping the enemy a lot harder than you would in a tank like the 113. And for the tank carrying a 130mm gun, it actually has some very good weapon handling statistics going for it. With a naming time of 2.45 seconds, it's way better than the 2.63 on the IS-7. As well, dispersion values at 0.353, again, compared to the 0.362 on the IS-7, is going to make it a lot easier to snap some shots across the map. And when the tank is on the move and the turret rotation dispersion values are at 0.18 and 0.18, that's even better than the WZ-113 at 0.2, which is on par with the IS-7. So it's actually very accurate on the move as well. It's good at snapping shots. It's got decent dispersion values. And not to mention the tank comes with 7 degrees of gun depression which is a whole one degree more than the IS-7 and WZ-113. And while that may not sound like a huge difference, when you're on a map like Mines and you're trying to shoot down at enemy tanks' lower plates on the hill, it's really going to show an immense difference. And not to mention, it actually makes the upper plate armor a lot more effective when using gun depression. Because in the WZ-113, where you're using six degrees of your gun depression to be able to shoot the enemy, this tank you can use seven, so you're making your upper plate a lot more thicker with a tougher angle to penetrate. And you move on to the mobility, and it's also extremely quick, with a top speed of 50 kilometers per hour. And while it may not have the best engine power at 825, because it is so much lighter than a tank like the IS-7, it has a great power-to-weight ratio at 16.61. As well, it's got way better terrain resistance than an IS-7. The main issue for me with the 113 compared to the 111 5A is that it has honestly the worst traverse speed I've ever seen. It's 20 degrees, and it's 24 on the 111 5A, which may not sound much better, but that's 17% better than the 113. And not to mention, the 113 also has one of the slowest turret traverse speeds in the game, and the 111 5A you really don't have that issue with. So when you're running a 113, especially with all these Sheridans running around now, you just can't turn the turret quick enough to snap them back when they're aiming at you. The 111 5A, as I said, it's got that excellent on-movement turret rotation dispersion factors, and when the tank can turn a lot quicker, and as well the turret, you can easily turn the tank, snap the shots, and deal quite a bit more average damage than you would be in a tank like the 113. And then we move on to the armor profile of the tank, and again, it's a very strong tank. Now currently, you can see the WZ-111 5A looking at a 113, and as I said before, the main issue with the 113 is its armor doesn't really hold up. Yes, you can angle it and get a very thick auto ricochet angle, but as soon as you load heat, the upper plate just, it's 250 millimeters thick, it's not going to bounce anything. Lower plate, 120, very easy penetration, and even the turret on this tank, while it is very thick because it does have that round Chinese turret, it's still at the cheeks, 260, even you move to the edges, still about 300 millimeters on average, which means that you can pretty easily snap this tank in the turret. And as I've said, the turret traverse speed on this tank is completely awful, so it's very easy to snap the turret as well, because it's not really moving it that fast. When we swap over to the 111 5A, you see a completely different change in the armor profile. First of all, upper plate is very thick at around 270, 260 millimeters thick effective, which is going to bounce pretty much most standard rounds from any tier 10 heavies you're coming up against. Although I will say tanks like E100s will overmatch your tank because they're very, very tall. But normally you're going to bounce a lot of the shells coming at the upper plate of this tank. 
As well, the lower plate is pretty thick at 217 millimeters, which means that if you put this tank at a pretty effective angle, that lower plate's becoming around 220. Upper plate is still about 250 millimeters thick, so you can actually bounce some medium tanks, some of the tier 9 vehicles that don't have the best guns, you can bounce some of the shells in your lower plate. And again, you use that excellent gun depression, and you can see that upper plate, 350 millimeters thick, it's going to be about 400 without shell normalization with heat. So you're not going to be able to ever penetrate that upper plate, even when running probably a Jagdpanzer shooting heat. And that's just what makes this tank so effective. As well, when you look at the turret armor on it, it might be the thickest turret in the game. Because there's a huge mantlet covering most of the tank, which is around 350 millimeters effective. And then you move to the edge of the turret right around the gun mantlet, and it's 400, 500 millimeters thick. Even the other side, again, 350. It is one of the thickest turrets in the game. You're never going to penetrate it, even with most premium ammo from tank destroyers. It's still going to be a very, very big struggle. Now, it does have cupolas on the top, but they're not weak at that. They've got some very thick edges at 270 millimeters thick, and you really have to hit dead on the center, which is still 230 millimeters thick. It's pretty good at side scraping, but the issue with this tank is that when you side scrape, it makes that uh, upper plate very, very weak because it's got like a weird Chinese Russian pike nose design where it's flat, but it's not like a 112 flat where you can angle it. It's more like you don't want to angle it. Just aim the front, hide that lower plate, and you're going to be bouncing 50, 60, 70 percent of the shots you're receiving. And the issue is that a lot of people just think that the 113 is better because of the statistics posted on it when they don't even have the tank. I can't tell you how many people in my comment section just say the 111 5A sucks and they don't even own the vehicle. And that's because you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't look at the statistics of a 113 and say, well, it's got a better gun, it's got more damage per minute, therefore it's a way better tank than the 111 5A. For me personally, I will pick the 111 5A every single day of the week over a 113. And the reason for for that being is because I've said the turret armor is way better. It's got that gun depression which makes it more flexible on every single scenario. As well it's got better hull armor. The tank can turn a lot quicker so it's not going to be dealing with flankings, stuff like that. It's got way better side scraping abilities because it's actually got um, you know spaced armor on the sides compared to the 113 really doesn't have any spaced armor. And the main issue with the 113 is I really only push it on a heavy side push. Because while the 113 is very quick in a straight line, when you're going up against medium tanks, they've usually got a lot of gun depression, they've got nasty heat penetration, thick turrets, and they're easily just going to spam shells right into your tank's upper plate, and then they're going to track you if there's more than one, flank you, and there's really nothing you can do about it. You're not going to be able to contest a tank like the Bat Chat, a Sheridan, they're easily just going to make fun of you, bully you, and take you right out of the game. When you're running a tank like the 111 5A, I really don't have that issue, because half the time it's very hard to pin the tank because it's got that very weird troll upper plate, it's got that pike nose, the turret is impenetrable to pretty much anything that's coming up against it, medium tanks just struggle, and as well you've got gun depression, so you can use your effective gun depression, fight the mediums on most terrain you get stuck on, and it's just really nice overall, and that's really why I love the tank, it's so fun, it's good on pretty much any map you get stuck on, it's very quick so you're able to get in position, I like a tank like the VK9, but for me, the issue with it is that with the missiles and then it's not fast enough, you usually get spotted before you can get into your position. You're losing half your hit points because of that weak side armor. This tank, it's very low down. It's actually got a really nice camouflage rating. So you can get into position very quickly. You're very low down. And once you're in position, if you put it in the right spot, that is one thing that's important. Is you can't just run this tank, of course, willy-nilly everywhere on the map. I can do it pretty effectively on most terrains I get stuck on. But of course, if you're stuck out in the open, this tank isn't going to do great. And in fact, if I'm stuck out in the open, I'd much rather be in a 113. But if you can run this tank in the correct scenario and you know where to put it, it'll do good on the heavy flank, the medium flank, any flank you pretty much get stuck on if you know what to do. And it's going to really effectively take out any vehicles you're coming up against. It's got that big alpha, and that's really why I love the tank. Now, if any of you guys disagree with me, this is just my opinion, of course. This is my favorite tank. Um, I'm guessing a lot of you guys are going to like all other types of favorite tanks at tier 10. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below as of your favorite tier 10 heavy. If it's the IS-7, the IS-4, 113, whatever you feel, let me know in the comments down below. And other than that, guys, I really want to thank you for all the support you've put into this channel because we're literally at 7,000 subscribers. It's been one week since I hit 6,000 and we're breaking 7,000, so I'm not sure what happened to make this channel skyrocket up there but i want to thank all of you for all the support you've given me wargaming's actually reached out to me as i said they're doing a giveaway 
It's going to end on Friday. I've had a couple questions on that. So it is going to end tomorrow. So send in your submissions today if you haven't sent them already. At 12 o'clock tonight, uh, I'm Eastern Time, I'm going to end the submissions. So I'm just going to make the channel private so you're not going to be able to submit any more. But other than that, guys, I really hope you did enjoy this video. If you liked it, hit that like button down below. Let me know what you liked about it in the comments down below. If you didn't like this video and you just completely disagree with me and think my opinion sucked, let me know as well what you think in the comments down below. But other than that, guys, I hope you all have a great day. Stay happy, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.